Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to Word Explosion. I'm your host, uh, Pastor Natalie Andrews, and I'm Pastor Bobby Natividad. Uh, Pastor Natalie and I are going to discuss something really helpful for all of you, and it will act almost like an umpire, especially in this season that we're going through. Okay, so uh, for starters, if you mm -hmm. don't mind me starting right now with them. The topic that we're going to cover is about what to expect on life's journey. If you equate life as a journey, um, I want everybody to understand that yes, we will always have the beginning and then the interim and then the ending. Okay, and um, that's basically living purpose purposefully for God mm -hmm. and the best example we have actually was mentioned by St. Paul in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 um, I'd like you to understand I'm actually reading from uh, Amplified version it says here um, urged on by faith again urged on by faith meaning to say motivated by faith when he was called, and this is referring to Abraham, um, what we call the father of faith. Yes. And he obeyed and went forth to a place. Again, he obeyed uh, by acting on what God asked him to do. He went to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. Please understand that Abraham was from the la land of Ur before. And now God is asking him to leave. Uh, I, I want you to understand that he came from a very wealthy background as well. He was very comfortable. And he was well settled in the land of Ur. And God is saying to him, that's not where you're going to continue. I want you to get out of that place and move to the promised land. And he did by faith. Like there was nothing there. There's no, he wasn't so sure whether it's going to be a land. But yet God was saying to him, you will receive an inheritance. It's like most of us today. And God is saying, you're going to live this Christian victorious life. So-called life. And yet, look at us now. We're going through all kinds of tests. All, all kinds of tests in this life. Um, COVID-19 is a perfect example for all of us. Who would expect that this would happen to all of us last year? Who did? Did anybody have any clue at all? Okay. And, um, but yet, just letting you guys know, you know it as well as I, I do that in January, you remember mm -hmm. that time when God just uh, prompted me mm -hmm. to call for a serious intercession and everybody cooperated. Yes. And that's when he declared to us at that time, he said that there is this brewing um, virus, but it's going to be a pandemic thing. You remember I said that? And uh, he warned us in advance, he said, cover everybody that you can cover. And I want you to know to this day, as we speak, not one of them was touched. Amen. Not Amen. one. Every single one we covered with our prayer, with our intercession. So moving along, that same thing with the inheritance that um, God promised Abraham. He said, I'm going to take you there. And I will bless you and I will make you a father of many nations there was no tangible proof for that time and that's what you call faith faith is something you don't see exactly. and yet it's a it's like a title D. yes a mm. actually also God gave us a word um, for 2020 that uh, a new beginning Isaiah 43 17 where a new thing will be happening and then uh, we have to have that accelerated, um, you know, we call it the app, uh, anointing, power, and his presence. And anointing, power, and his, his presence. presence. So it's app, right? Uh -huh. The, the, A -P -P, acro the yes. acronym for it. And uh, God is talking about the um, our faith that needs to be accelerated. Uh, little did we know, hindi po tayo handa dun sa mangyayaring yun. Pero hinanda tayo ng Diyos, yung mga anak ng Diyos na papagsabihan niya na in advance kung anong mangyayari. Pero may papasok po na kalabidad or pandemic o yung uh, sakit na hindi natin in-expect. At buong mundo po, naapektuhan ito. 
and to this day we know na meron pa rin mga lockdown, may mga shelter in place na sa ibang places, ibang countries. Pero ang sinasabi po ng Diyos dito, huwag po tayo mabahala na may mga dumarating na pagsubok sa buhay natin o mga kalamidad, pero hindi po tayo dapat na move doon kasi ang nakakamove po sa atin is yung salita ng Diyos. When we have declared na maski isang member ng church hindi magkakasakit, hindi magkakaroon ng COVID-19, God proved it. And ganun din po yung mga pinapakain namin mga homeless. Uh, every Tuesday when we go there, we declare the word to them. And to this day, wala po nagkasakit kahit isa sa mga homeless. Marami po sila doon. Nasa labas sila, naka-exposed. And anytime, pwede sila magkasakit. Pero po yung faith at yung declaration is very, very important. Now, the good thing about that is please realize that with the homeless people, they don't even observe for a fraction of a second this, uh, what do you call this, uh, quarantine or uh, social distancing or even using all the necessary uh, precautions, if you like, uh, masks or using sanitizer. They've got none of those and yet not one. Still in the contracted COVID-19 as we speak nobody got it and that's since mid of March now praise God for that and that's what I'm saying to you that when you receive the word of God okay it's like your inheritance it and what you need to do is to act on it immediately and do not uh, allow anything to hinder you I want you to know that in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9, it says, For a wide door of opportunity for effectual service has opened to me. That's what St. Paul said. Uh, and there he said, a great and promising one. And there are many adversaries. You see, opportunities, but adversaries galore so what are we going to do with those things okay let's discuss that tonight um, I want you to know that many many times the enemy would like to tempt God's people by adapting themselves or adapting things in fact into their lives that are called substitutes guys there are no substitutes there are only absolutes in God's word they, they notice that, that yes. a lot of people would like to resort to that yes. now and again. Yes. So um, I, I want you to expect these things. This is what we're going to discuss today. That when there are opportunities, number one, and that's what we all, all going to cover today. One is opportunities and oppositions. Those two things. You should expect them. Okay? Just because we are Christians doesn't mean we are exempted from um, tests and trials again tests and trials of your life in fact in the book of James it says count it all joy when you it's fall counted. into diverse uh, temptations or tests in your life count it all joy mean to say don't cry about it don't don't worry about it don't don't even um, waste a, a minute thinking about all the tests that are coming your way uh, I know you is, you may say, Pastor, that's a bit easier than that, isn't it? And a lot of Christians we encounter me saying, but uh, you know, my case is different. How is your case so different? Is God different? That's my question. Sometimes we think we're the only ones going through it. Yes, we can and go. It's just my family, it's, it's me. But in actual fact, marami pong dumadaan doon. Kasalukuyan ngayon, haba kami nagsasalita sa inyo, yung iba po, May mga iba na, of course, may na, na matay. Like today, here in USA, uh, we have about 2,700 2, deaths. Okay? So if you look at it, maybe you're thinking, I'm next. But you know what? Declare. Declare with your family that not one will get sick, not one will be affected by that. And hindi lang po sa COVID-19 to itong tinuturo namin. This is applicable sa kahit anong dinadaan na ninyong situation sa buhay ninyo para matuto po tayo yung resiliency. Importante po yan. Tsaka yung flexibility natin na matuto tayong para maging rubber ball na kung bumagsak man kayo, tatayo kayo uli. Hindi kayo, you won't remain at the bottom. 
or on the floor, but you will Down. be up yes. and running and serving God. So um, a lot of times we forget the word so easily. And because we do that, then we have to be reminded constantly as well. What else is the best solution for people who have intentional, uh, what do you call this, uh, forgetfulness in their heads? But uh, just to remind them, simple as that. So the one thing I want you all to understand is if you, what's rare and what is surprising for me is if Christians do not encounter opposition. And if that's happening to you, like you have no oppositions in your life, you better go back to God and ask for some oppositions. Because all those oppositions actually will polish you, perfect you, as it were, and make you a better Christian. Amen. So, uh, the only thing that I want to remind all of us is, yes, we vary. Some people have bigger problems. Am I, am I right in saying that? Yes. They have bigger trials, they have bigger tests. And I said, but let me just say this to you. The desires of your assignment in life, the calling of your life, usually determines the size of the attack that you receive as well, or tests and trials in your life. Um, I want to focus right now on what St. Paul was saying um, in verse 7 of the same 1 Corinthians chapter 16. He says, I have fought the good fight. So I was asking God about this last night personally. I said, what is this fighting the good fight, God? And he explained it to me. He said, it's fighting the fact that you just force your normal head, mm -hmm. your flesh to ignore. And I promise you, it's not easy to ignore tests and trials. Mm -hmm. But you've got to fight that you, you ignore that by resting in his promises instead. Amen. Amen. Just staying cool, staying rested. You remain immovable, unshakable. As a Christian. Bada bing, bada bing. So anyway, all I, I all I'm admonishing about today is I want you to focus on what God says rather than circumstances and tests and everything. Those things will change. And they change so quickly. But the only thing that's really stable is called God. And what God gives us is His Word. So how can it be unstable? So once more, He said, I fought the good fight. Meaning to say, I, I resisted everything. I stood everything down on the stand. I'm still standing. Tenaciously I'm standing. And I'm not going to be moved. You know, the definition of a real um, uncompromisingly righteous person is a Movable, and that's who you are. That's what I am. Like a rock. Absolutely. Yeah. Arak ay bato. Hindi kayo yun na mumove. Hindi kayo yung yung alam niyo malaking bato. Hindi ko basa basa ma makupush niyo lang yon. Ma bigat yon. Ganyan kayo kabigat sa mata ng kaawa. Hindi niya kayo mapush basta. Hindi kayo basta lang ma matetemp o papasok na lang kayo sa alam niyo kasi sabi yung pusa atin kapag uh, nahihirapan na tayo kahit sa Patalim, okay. kumakapit tayo. Eh, pag ginawakan nyo naman okay. yung patalim, tsaka hinatak sa kamay nyo, dugo naman po yung kamay ninyo. No, that's precisely what I was saying earlier on. That you take substitutes. Mm -hmm. uh, God's word cannot be replaced by substitutes. Don't ever forget that. So don't use your flesh. Okay? Don't use your flesh as a judge, as a final word. As opposed to God's word. Just letting you know. In 1 Corinthians 9 verses 24 to 27. It says. Do you not know. That in a race all of us. Okay. Are runners in the kingdom of God. Um, all runners run. Of course we all know that. Have you seen how the marathon would start all the time. Like you've got thousands. Then all of a sudden. Yeah, as we, they reach the finish line. It, it thins out. And then only. The Few people real... can make it, right? And then finally, there's only one winner. Can you imagine that? Out so, of the thousands. Or, so yeah. he's in the kingdom. Of... Now, I want you to know, St. Paul said, run as a winner. Run like you will be the winner. We are the winners in Christ. At least that's a promise of God. Act like a champion. Right? You have to. You have, you have no choice. Because in this life, whatever you show the enemy, he'll take advantage of that. 
He'll bounce on you. And did sure. you notice that with the champions, they don't give themselves options. Mm -hmm. You have no. Options. They only have one focus, and that is to champion it. Winners to never win. quit. There you but go. But quitters never win. Again, say that. Say, sir, say that once more. Winners never quit. Winners and, never quit. And uh, quitters never win. And quitters never win. <laughs> That's not Jacob, isn't it? So anyway, moving along, um, they do it. The word of God says to earn a crown. Yeah, but what kind of crown? They do it. In, they, they do it in the world. You know the the Olympians or the uh, champion of Olympics. Anyway, those that would receive uh, medals or um, rewards. You say the gold medal. They they do it for the gold medal. Okay, with the pride of the country or whatever that they're representing. Let me just say this to you. It's those things. They do intense training. And when I say intense, you have no idea how intense it is. I will give you probably a slightest idea about how it's being done. It's, it's something that you wouldn't want to do. Okay? And normal people would hate to do is the yes. word. So um, they do it. The word of God says for a crown that will not last. But we do it for a crown that will last forever. The things we do for God, guys, is eternal. Get real. So it's all worth it. Give it all that you have. And now, in verse 26, he says, Therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly. You have your goal in front of you. In short stay focused but because what you're focusing on is not something that is worthless these guys fight for something as hard as that for something that is not permanent or eternal we fight for something for the crown that is eternal yes. that's what saint paul said so uh i do not fight like a boxer beating the air he said no i strike a blow to my body meaning to say I discipline I buffet my body meaning to say the word is discipline I highly and intensely discipline my body he said to make it um, a slave to uh, so that after I have preached to others meaning to say I, I make my body a slave to the spirit that God has given me in order to achieve the divine purposes of God in my life again he uses his spirit and he tells his body what to do, not the other way around. Carnal Christians would use their flesh to use the spirit to achieve their own goals, which are temporal. Whereas real Christians would use their bodies as slaves to obey the spirit in order to achieve the divine purposes of God. Just like what uh, Abraham did. And so are the other uh, heroes of the Bible. He says, I do it for one simple reason. He said, I have to do this, not just for me. He said, I do it myself so I will not be disqualified for the prize. Guys, the prize is sure. Are you sure? What are you thinking about? Yeah, remember there was like a scripture that talks about who disqualified you. Because you know you can disqualify yourself yes. from the race. Because you make your own decision. And God doesn't normally step in pagdating na sa will na ng tao po. Ang Diyos ay mapagbigay sa atin. Tayo pa gumagawa pa rin ng decision sa buhay natin. Pero importante po na alam natin na ang Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat ang pwede lang po magbago ng sitwasyon ninyo. Maaaring iba sa inyong ngayon wala kayong pambili ng bigas, Nagba, may baha sa harap ninyo hindi nyo alam sana kayo matutulog susunod na gabi hindi nyo alam kung paano nyo pakakainin yung mga anak ninyo alam nyo po, ang Diyos kahit anong daanan natin sa buhay kahit ano pong um, peligro na dadaanan natin sa buhay natin ang Diyos lang po ang pwede makapag-create ng mirakulo yun po ang bawat, bawat isa sa atin na gustong pakita ng Diyos sa ating na siya pa rin ang miracle working God. Hindi po natin pwedeng i-underestimate ang power ng Panginoon. Marami na po kaming story ang narinig, nakita at na-experience na just lang po ang pwedeng makagawa ng kakaibang kilos 
at yung sagot nga po sa panalangin ng tao. You know, there's a saying na <clears throat> don't tell God how big your problem is. But tell your problem how, how big, big your God is. Importante po yun. Kasi oftentimes, minamagnify po natin yung problema sa ibang way. Ang gusto po ng Diyos, yung problema maging ganun kaliit at siya yung malaking Panginoon na inaasahan Do you remember natin. that minister who explained to us like, when you look at the Word of God, the way you have to look at it is, he said, use the telescope properly. Okay? So you look at the eyepiece, okay? Look at the eyepiece when you're looking at God's word, okay? Look at the eyepiece and magnify the word of God. And when you look at the world or your circumstances or your situation, look at the other side of the lens, okay? So if you've I've done it before when I was a kid, and it makes it super minuscule like that, your problem. I'm not saying the problem disappeared. I never said that. But God is saying, you got to um, breeze through it. And who's going to do it for you? It's God. I love, when you were explaining something, I heard God saying to me, nothing is too difficult for me, Bobby. Amen. Nothing. And when God says nothing, it really means nothing. Yes. But some Christians, they're negotiating, oh, but you don't know when you're going through it. Listen, I don't know. I nearly died. You remember yeah. that? Yes. I have experience. It's, I was this close to death. And I want you to know it didn't last for a few minutes only. It lasted for two weeks that I was having a hard time breathing and everything was painful from head to toe. My fever was skyrocketing and you name it, just going awry. And I, I don't know uh, in the natural how I made it and even all the doctors you know it said said that you shouldn't expect him back anymore because his fever never left his body for two weeks two consecutive weeks um, and the fever didn't come down from 105 but it went higher That's right. and that means my brain was already microwave and do you know how painful that is but anyway uh, when that was happening to me they had to um, induce coma so I was clinically dead to be honest with you and everybody yes. knew that and uh, I know what it is to be in pain. But did I lose faith? You no. were the witness. No. In it's fact, important. she did something to me. I remember how all the doctors were crying. Uh, I, I will give you my testimony one of these days. The, all yes. the doctors were already crying. The doctors were crying and the nurses. And my sister was the only one beside me because they thought they had me back again. And... Um, she happen. played the music the Christian music and she asked me who's dying and having a hard time breathing already I could hardly breathe but she looked at me and she said will you sing with me yes. in, in the, the presence, presence of Jehovah with my last Amen. breath that I could afford I was still singing praise God when nothing else is left in this world there's only one 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 God that we can cry on and tonight we're giving you this opportunity to be able to have that personal relationship with God. Kung hindi pa niyo pong napasyahan sa buhay ninyo, ni minsan, na tanggapin ng Diyos, bakit po hindi natin pagbigyan ng Panginoon? Kasi matagal na po natin pinagbibigyan yung sarili natin. Kung wala po nangyayari dun sa pagbibigay ninyo sa inyong flesh, bakit hindi niyo pong bigyan ng pag-asa o ang chance ang Diyos sa buhay ninyo? So, kung pwede pong sumunod tayo sa maiksing panalangin para dun sa mga hindi pa tumatanggap at para din po sa inyo na hindi pa na kahit tumanggap kayo, hindi nyo binigyan ng pagkakataon ng Diyos makakilis sa buhay nyo. Let's rededicate our lives to God. So, sumunod lang po tayo sa short prayer which is, Lord Jesus, I come before your presence. Come before. I humble myself right now. I ask for forgiveness ask for forgiveness. all the sins I have committed. All the sins I've committed. Today, Today, I am opening my heart to you. Opening my heart to you. I ask you, Jesus, ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart. To come into my heart. To be my Lord and Savior. To be my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Thank you Thank for you. dying the cross for me. 
and for forgiving all my sins and healing all my diseases. Forgiving all my sins and healing all my diseases. In Jesus' name, I pray. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. At kung pinagdasal niyo po at kung sumunod kayo sa panalangin na yun, ang, ang panalangin po namin sa inyo ngayon is pagpalaing kayo ng Panginoon. And welcome to the family of God. And isa pa pong hihingiin ko rin, kung wala po kayong simbahan na pinupuntahan pa o pagkalingko, wala kayong pinupuntahan kundi yung movie theaters o kung ano lang, ito na po ang pagkakataon ninyo. Kung makakasama kayo sa Zoom, mas uso na ngayon po yung Zoom dahil sa pandemic, to join the church. At kung wala po kayong Biblia, this is the time to order your Bible. O kaya, manghiram po kayo kung ano man, gawa nyo ng paraan na ma-receive nyo. Kasi dalawang bagay po yan eh, ang hinihingi lang ng Diyos sa atin. Ma-renew yung mind natin. At pangalawa, i-discipline po natin yung ating katawan para sa kanya. Now, just uh, for the final words, actually, I want to say that in the kingdom of God, let's make it simple, it's all or nothing, always. Okay? Not, uh, okay, I will partially make you the Lord of my life. I will partially obey you, Lord. I will partially give you this. I will partially give you that. In the kingdom of God, it's not going to work out if that's how you're going to do it. And even all the athletes that are competing, they have to have the right attitude, and that is give their all just to win that medal and uh, if you like accolade you know uh, that is that, well, it's not eternal but ours is eternal now let me just uh, give you some tips here in 2nd Corinthians 4 7 it says the tips on what to do number one uh, failure to read God's Word and pray every day is a real big down if you like um, downer for your faith or for your walk with God number two saying no to God when he deals with you about a specific area in your life number three moral failure stemming from wrong habits and relationships okay so God would like us to be morally astute in front of everyone and uh, you can read that in in some of the letters of St. Paul. And then allowing doubt and fear to cripple you is another, if you like, deterrent for your faith. If you're allowing yourself to be given to doubt and fear. In James it says, a man who doubts must not expect anything from God. That's the promise Amen. of God's word. Amen. So, we'll that's, give you more next point. time. Yeah, All right. Very good points. And uh, uh, we expect that God's presence will be in your house now that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And sa muling pagkikita po natin, maraming salamat po sa inyong pagsubaybay sa aming programa. God bless you po. The Lord bless and keep you. Maganda